Let's talk about houses. How many times have you been told by somebody, oh, I've made a fortune on my house? Well, that's rubbish because everybody's houses are going up at the same rate. The only way to make money on a house is to buy it somewhere that's bad that then becomes good. Fine. How can you do that with a car? What you need is a car that's not yet a classic, but that one day will be. A kind of classic waiting in the wings, if you will. And this scheme has the whiff of genius about it. What you're looking for is a car that's young enough to still be good to drive and reliable, but old enough to have been forgotten. A car like this, the Volkswagen Corrado VR6. This was VW's sports coupe for the 90s, and I think it's really rather special, even though under the skin it's a bit of a mongrel. It's been kind of cobbled together from bits of old VW, so we've got Passat in the rear suspension and a bit of Mark II Golf at the front, but they knew what they were doing. The result is fantastic. This drives as well as, if not better, than a lot of current cars, and I mean that, it really does. And remember, we're talking about a car that went out of production eight years ago. And it's quick, like properly quick. Nought to 60, it'll do in 6.7 seconds. Well, that's quick today. <laughs> That 2.9 litre V6 up front, 190 brake horsepower it puts out. It sounds fantastic. There were other versions available, but this is the one to go for, because that VR6 engine is one of the best VW ever made. So its looks and its performance go some way towards making it a future classic. But there is another factor that's even more important. It was a complete flop. It was too expensive and nobody bought it, which means it's quite rare. And there's one more thing. It's the only 90s coupe that isn't completely embarrassing. I mean, think about it, just what message are you sending the world when you're seen climbing out of a Calibra, or a Pro, or even a Celica? Not good. My second tip comes from the 1980s. It's this, the Mercedes 190E 2.5 16. Quite a mouthful, and that's not even the full title because you've got to strap Cosworth onto the end of that because Cosworth helped develop the engine, and that gives a clue as to what this car's about. Of course, every potential classic should have a good story attached to it, and that's the case with this Mercedes because we got this car by default. Basically, Mercedes developed the 190E 2.56 Cosworth to go rally, but just as they were ready to launch it onto the rally scene, Audi brought out the Quattro, and that changed everything. Without four-wheel drive, the Mercedes would have been absolutely hopeless. So they abandoned their plans to go rally and decided to produce this road-going version instead. And it's a belter. <laughs> Really not an especially sophisticated car, four-cylinder engine, but it's powerful. That 197 brake horsepower Cosworth engine is very, very good. Plus, and this is always good for classic status, it's got racing pedigree, because when the rallying plans fell through, Mercedes simply took it track racing instead. In the 1990s, it clocked up 50 wins and a German touring car championship. In fact, in his day, Martin Brundle said this had one of the best handling saloon car chassis anywhere in the world. And he knows what he's talking about. This was very much the Mercedes equivalent of the BMW M3. And in truth, it really was always in the shadow of the M3. It was Cinderella, but the coach never came. But you know, that underdog factor is part of its appeal. Next to this, the BMW looks a bit, well, obvious. 
Tempted? Well, if you are, you're best off going for one in black or silver with an automatic gearbox. Which is why I'm driving a pink one with a manual box, obviously. In a few years, these two will be proper, all the medals classics, without the beady image, the rampant engine failure and the moss on the seats. So my advice is, buy one now, before everybody wants them.